Landlords all over the country are breaking the law without realizing it. They're putting thousands of pounds, or in some cases, even their freedom at stake because they haven't paid attention to a minor detail. So in this video, I'm gonna reveal the top five laws that landlords are breaking using real life examples, and then I'll show you exactly how to fix them. And if you think you know this stuff already, stick around to the end because I'm willing to bet that you're breaking at least one of these laws. So let's get started with our first illegal mistake, which is much easier to make than you might think. By the way, in this video, I'm talking about England specifically. There are variations in Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland that you should make yourself aware of if you rent property there. Most landlords know that they must protect their tenants' deposit. And so they should, because this has been the law since 2007. So you might think that if you protect the deposit with an approved scheme within 30 days of receiving it and give your tenant a copy of the protection certificate, that's your job done. But a landlord by the name of Swindles, which may not have helped when he went to court, was fined three times the amount of the deposit he was holding despite having done all of this. So what did he do wrong? Well, he failed to provide the tenant with what's known as prescribed information about the protection of the deposit. This takes the form of a few pages of information about where the deposit is held and how the scheme operates. Each deposit scheme has a template on their website that you can download and fill in. But it goes even further than that because you may also need to provide a whole separate terms and conditions leaflet. One of the schemes, the TDS, specifically says the prescribed information is incomplete without this leaflet. Another scheme, the DPS, says that you need to provide a leaflet if you're using the custodial scheme. It's also important that you can prove you've served all this information because the court isn't going to accept a pinky promise. So the easiest way to handle this is to provide all the information along with the tenancy agreement at the start of the tenancy. I bundle up everything, the tenancy agreement, the deposit information, the energy performance certificate, everything else you legally need to provide into one single PDF. The tenant then digitally signs the whole lot as one document so they can't say later that there was something missing. By the way, for this and every other bit of law breaking we're going to cover, even if you use a letting agent, it still falls on you. If they accidentally break the law, it's you who will bear the consequences. And while you could try to sue them for negligence, it won't be much comfort if you're doing it from behind bars. So even if you do use an agent, it's critical that you know the law yourself so you're more likely to spot if they've missed something which does happen more often than you think. So does it seem trivial that you can be fined for not providing some random leaflet that the tenant could easily download themselves if they wanted to? Well I agree but this next bit of rule breaking is far more serious. Another law that almost all landlords know about is the need to provide a gas safety certificate and renew it every year. But even if you do this, you could still be fined up to £30,000 because since 2020, there's been a new requirement, the need to provide an electrical safety certificate as well. There's always been a requirement for landlords to provide an electrical installation that's safe. But until 2020, there wasn't a specific legal framework about how often it had to be tested or what needed to be given to the tenant. But now, the electrical installation must be tested by a competent person at least every five years. The certificate needs to be given to the tenant before they move in, along with the deposit information and everything else. And when it's renewed, an updated copy needs to be given within 28 days of the inspection taking place. And if the inspection finds that work is needed, this also needs to be done within 28 days or sooner if it's particularly urgent. Electrical safety trips landlords up because it's relatively new. And because the certificate lasts for five years, it's more likely that you'll forget to have it renewed compared to a gas safety certificate, which becomes an annual routine. So even though its expiry is years away, the easiest thing to do is put the renewal date into an online calendar and set a reminder at least a few months in advance so you have plenty of time to get the inspection booked in. So that takes care of the property. But what about the tenants? Last year, landlords paid fines totaling £151,480 for breaking a law that many have never heard of. And this year, the punishment has become even harsher because the maximum penalty has increased from £1,000 to £10,000. And in some cases, the government can even send you to prison for a maximum of five years. So what is this law? It's known as right to rent, meaning it's your job to make sure your tenants have the right to be living in the UK. You might wonder why on earth that's your problem, but nevertheless, you need to make the checks and make them accurately. Because if someone shows you a forged document and you don't notice, apparently that's still your fault and you can be fined. You also need to make checks on all adult occupiers, not just only those you expect might not have the right to live in the UK. Predictably, this has led to discrimination 
as landlords shy away from renting to people who don't look British out of fear of getting something wrong. The High Court has even ruled that the policy has a disproportionately discriminatory effect, as well as little to no effect on controlling immigration. But this was overturned when the government appealed, so it's still something we all have to do. So what do you think of this law? If you ask me, which we didn't, it puts too much of a burden on well-meaning landlords and does nothing to deter the few criminal landlords who are knowingly housing people who aren't allowed to be here. But nevertheless, you need to make these checks, so how do you do it? Well, if they're a British or Irish citizen, you can check their documents yourself. Or, if you're not confident in sporting a fake, you can outsource the process to an officially approved body. If they're not a citizen, it gets more complicated and the government website has a list of which documents apply in different circumstances. In all case, you need to see the original documents, make copies of them and keep those copies until a year after they've moved out. By the way, if this is starting to get a bit complicated, you can download our legal lettings checklist in the description, which will guide you through this process step by step. Now, right to rent is something you have to check everywhere in England. But depending on where your property is located, there might be another way you're breaking the law. Because Stephen Hyde was fined £90,863 for breaking this law relating to three properties in London. Cameron Adil was fined £47,330 for breaking this law in relation to his seven properties in County Durham. And Michael Cosmos was fined £9,000 despite putting his mistake right as soon as he found out about it. So what did they all do wrong? Well, they'd failed to sign up for a local license. Licensing scheme. Most landlords know that HMOs, which is properties rented out by the room, need licenses in most cases. But over the past five years, more and more local councils have introduced licensing for regular buy-to-lets as well. Again, you can let me know what you think in the comments, but if you want a bit of personal opinion, I think these local schemes are a total racket. There is no evidence that they improve standards. They cost a fortune. The last one I signed up for cost £887 for a five-year license. And despite collecting all this money, it's only a tiny minority of properties that ever get inspected to make sure they're meeting standards. But is it worth trying to dodge them? Definitely not. Confusingly, they're called selective licensing schemes, but there's nothing selective about them. You have to register if you fall in one of these areas or you can be fined up to £30,000 per property and ordered to repay up to a year's worth of rent to your tenants. And to make matters worse, if you don't have a license when you should, you can't end a tenancy using the no-fault section 21 procedure. That means your application will be thrown out by the court and you'll need to go and get your property licensed, which can take months before you apply again. The problem is you're not necessarily going to be told that there is a licensing scheme in operation in the area where your property is located. Your solicitor might flag it up or they might not. So just Google the name of the local authority plus selective licensing. If nothing comes up, you're probably in the clear. Although you can always call the housing department to check. If there is licensing, there'll be a page with information about how to apply and a map of the area covered. It might not be the whole local authority area, so you can have a look and see if your property is in or out. And now for the big one. Not the biggest in terms of fines. The maximum for this one is £4,000. But it is the law that in my experience, I'd say the vast majority of landlords are breaking. You'll know that businesses have a responsibility for keeping your personal data safe and they can be fined if they don't. But did you know that that extends to you as a landlord as well? Yes, if you hold data about your tenants, you need to protect that data. And part of that protection involves registering with the Information Commissioner's Office or ICO. What does this involve? Nothing more than paying a fee, which for almost everyone will be £40 per year. What do you get for that £40? Just a certificate which I guess you can print out and hang on your wall if you never passed any piano exams. Many landlords will believe they don't process personal data if they use a letting agent. But according to the Guild of Residential Landlords, in most cases, you still should. You're only exempt if you just receive rental statements containing no tenant data at all. Actually, you're also exempt if you use no digital technology at all to manage tenancies. So a rare victory for the power of pen and paper. So are you breaking the law? Probably yes. Are you likely to get caught? Statistically, no. The ICO's figures show that they only issued 126 penalties across all businesses in the most recent year available. And don't worry, your secret's safe with me. So, landlords, how many laws are you breaking? And wannabe landlords, has it made you think twice about getting into property? And is it actually worth investing in property in 2024? Well, check out this video next, where I answer that question and give you some advice to make sure that any investments you do make are as profitable as possible.